We're here at the ITU studio in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. James Ngaro Jeru, a rapporteur for study group two, question one slash two, creating the smart society, social and economic development through ICT applications. What do you think will be the major outcome for the study question you're involved in? Uh, the major outcomes of our question one slash two is that we are going fast to provide uh, an explanation or a concept of what smart society is. Uh, one of the major things which we expect uh, we'll be providing is a clear guidance on what we should be focusing in terms of the scope and the services which will be provided within a smart society. Uh, currently, the word smartness has been used in most nations and most uh, regions to envisage how uh, the, the, the countries and the nations would be able to achieve uh, the, their vision of being smart. And it has mainly been used in terms of uh, tools, in terms of uh, buildings, in terms of cars, uh, phones, and all this uh, looks at how technology is being utilized to ensure that um, there the is in increased productivity, increased uh, efficiency and competitiveness within uh, the, the entire sector. So one of uh, our outputs is then to try and make sure that people understand when we talk of smart society, what is it that uh, should be encompassed in the definition of smart society. How relevant is the study question in relation to the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals? This question is very relevant when it comes to the attainment of the SDGs. Uh, out of the 17 uh, SDGs, uh, about 15 of them do require the involvement of uh, the ICT. And the use of ICT require, is being seen as an enabler in utilizing uh, the, the equipment, the technology, and the software so that we can be able to uh, uh, have the developing countries uh, achieve most of the SDG, uh, SDGs. We require a society that is uh, smart enough so that they can be able to utilize the uh, information technologies and also uh, improve on health and education, on agriculture, on energy and transport. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, we see our output uh, for, the, for, for the equation will enable uh, the developing countries to be able to achieve the SDGs. What would you say has been the contribution of ITUD study groups to the overall development of the ICT sector? The ICT sector is a very dynamic sector, and the, the role of ITUD is that it provides us with an opportunity to be able to share information uh, on what different uh, nations, especially the developing countries, what they have been able to innovate, what they have been able to implement, and how those experiences can be shared with the developing countries so therefore, that they can be able to benchmark and be able to learn from the experiences of the developed countries. When, uh, develop, when uh, we meet within the development uh, sector group meetings, uh, one of the most important things which we do is to share the experiences. The questions which are normally presented and discussed are about um, experiences which developing countries and developed countries all together uh, uh, share among each other. So it is important in the sense that it gives us uh, an enabling environment so that we can be able to benchmark within each other and also learn from the challenges and the, the benefits, the opportunities which uh, other member states have also been able to. And also it assists uh, the, 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 the sector groups who are involved in the innovation to be able to show their case studies on the areas in which they have been able to innovate and how these can be applied uh, within uh, the real streets in the developing countries.
Thank you very much, Thank you. Dr. James Njero.